Hi, I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Andrew Moran, Sarah Calgill, James Fight, and Jeff Charles. And this is the Conservative Five, Liberty Nation's online TV news program. The Biden administration is setting records we cannot afford, and we have to talk about it, whether we like it or not. In 2021, the post-COVID U.S. economy is dealing with rampant price inflation, anemic economic growth, and a ballooning federal deficit. But will public policymakers respond with conventional economic solutions or insist that approving deficit finance spending bills will be the cure for the highest inflation rate in 39 years? Anyone and everyone is talking about it, but few understand it. Well, here at Liberty Nation, we have a secret weapon. His name is Andrew Moran, our very own economic guru. Andrew, could you please explain what the heck is going on here in terms we can understand? Well, if you if you if you mean inflation, I mean there are so many factors when it comes to inflation. You have the Federal Reserve monetary expansion. They've created one third of all U.S. dollars ever created in U.S. history in a time span of just less than two years. You have the global supply chain crisis. You have the the fiscal expansion of the Biden administration, plus the, also the trillions of dollars that Trump spent when he was president. You have simultaneous global demand as the economy opens, and then you know just on, on the commodities front, you have the weather conditions. You have you have pu- public policy making in other countries. So it's just a perfect storm of, the, of this price inflation you're having. And all the numbers that I've studied from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that it's not really slowing down, especially on the energy front. So I think that that's that's uh, it's, it's quite dangerous. But what I'm concerned about is that the, the Federal Reserve or the White House, they don't want to remove the spike punchable from the economy. They want to keep injecting the economy with all this free money. And that's one of the issues of inflation is that you, you have this excess, ex, excess level or excess capital flow and, and having people chasing too fewer demands. So that's that's another issue. So if they take this away, if they take all this money away, they could threaten economic decline or even exacerbate the anemic in- growth that you're seeing right now. Perhaps stock market would even crash because they've become so dependent on this free money. Um, I was telling Jeff recently on Ellen TV that in economics, it says that you take about six months for public policy to seep into the economy. And that you, you saw that in re- happening in real time. When uh, Biden became president, he approved that, that massive stimulus check. Uh, I think it was $600, $1,200 bucks to all these people across the country. <laughs> Guess what? Six months later, you saw the massive price inflation start accelerating. So you know you see this happening unfold. It's just that the administration and the and the Federal Reserve they never took it seriously. They kept insisting it was transitory, and then finally they said, "Okay, you know what? Yeah, it's transitory." But you know what? Red hot inflation. Do you know when it's going to subside? It's going to subside right before the midterm elections. <laughs> all right. So Sarah, we got a situation going on where all of this rampant spending, and then of course we, they rose the debt ceiling. You know this week. Uh, is what's causing the problem, but yet the Democrats are kind of going down that road anyway. You know, I've never seen anything like this in a year. (laughs) I've seen regime changes cause issues. I have never seen, and Andrew called it the perfect storm, and maybe that's exactly what it is. And, And I don't know who to point the blame at, but I do know that the people in my world, um, that's all they can talk about is how, much they have to spend on a pound of hamburger and how they can't find what they need, how they can't get their Christmas tree, you know, filled with presents. It's, and we're just the little people. I, you know, I, I took one semester of economics in college and I, I couldn't follow it. In fact, my instructor who I couldn't understand threw an eraser at me to wake me up, but, um, You know, when I hear what Andrew has to say, I want to ask Andrew instead of anybody else, how do you fix this? I mean, where do we go from here? I don't don't even know the first thing. I know how to get a job, make money and pay bills. I can't I can't look much further than that. I can't even, you know, begin to write out one trillion dollars. How does this normal person, you know, like me didn't go through economics 102. <laughs> um, how do we, how do we deal with it? Where, where's the fix? Oh, is that, sorry, that's a direct question. Okay. Well, so first of all, on the, on the policy front, this it's a, it's a perfect question too, because the federal reserve, they just finished their December FOMC meeting and the dot plot showed that, okay, 
three rate hikes are planned in 2022. But if you watch that press conference of Jerome Powell, he said, oh yeah, just because a dot plot shows three rate hikes, it not doesn't necessarily mean that's the plan moving forward. So that's, that doesn't really calm you down with your inflation fears. Second of all, when it, on, the, on, on, on the, in the market side of things, if you look at the supply chain crisis, it's not improving at all. In China, they have the, the new seven-week quarantine uh, where people can't leave their boat. So what you're having is that you have a huge traffic jam uh, at these Chinese ports. So I think the last number I saw was about 250 ships that are just standing there. Uh, in, the, in the West Coast United States, the, the ships are at, are at a high le- record level of uh, the traffic jam. They're extending well into the Pacific Ocean. What you can do to fix it, you can't really do anything at all except try to live within your means and try to earn more. If you try to earn more, inflation going to hurt you. If you, see, if you see all the real wage growth, it's evaporated because of the rampant flash, price inflation of the last year. All right. But it's interesting because, Jeff, you know, uh, inflation, uh, basically well-to-do people notice it. Middle class people feel it. But it's mm-hmm. the lower class people that are really getting hammered. And why why uh, why don't the Democrats understand that? I thought they were supposedly the you know the champions of the lower class. How does this help? It, it doesn't, Lisa. I mean, it's interesting that you talk about the different levels of different classes and how they're feeling it. I saw an article saying that out, even millionaires are starting, starting to feel the impact of inflation. So if millionaires are feeling it, it's got to be horrible for, for people who are under the poverty line. And it's, and I think what's been very vexing to me is the response of this administration. They've been poo-pooing the whole thing. Oh, this is just a rich person's problem or whatever, or it's just transitory or, or whatever. And, you know, and Andrew and I have talked about this, you know, I, I know that Biden does not deserve all the blame for this. I know he doesn't have full control over this, but at the same time, if, if, if you're doing the same thing that you know caused this, why are you continuing to do it? Especially when you do claim to be the champion of the little person. I mean, spending was down in November. This Christmas season is going to be down too. And it's making me wonder how it's going to impact all of those businesses, because this is usually when they try to get into the, into the black. If we're spending less because things are more, more, um, more expensive, it could also have ramifications going into 2022 as well. Jim, you're our legislative hound. And, and I, I saw a reporter the other day asking uh, Elizabeth Warren in the hallway, you know, how, how do we deal with this inflation? And she said, well, we have to get the rich to pay their fair share. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a mantra as if the, the, the wealthy class, the affluent people are not paying taxes. Do, you know, do you think they're going to try to legislate their way out of this and uh, you know, try to tax the rich some more? And is that going to fix it? Well, I think the Democrats are always going to try to tax the rich other than themselves. Um, OK, but the rich have been taxed. Oh, no, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying they aren't. I'm just <laughs> I'm saying that's that's where they're going. What, what happens with these things is, OK, we're going to soak the rich, right? These uh, these tax changes are only going to affect the rich. What ends up happening is they affect everyone uh, except for the people that can pay CPAs enough to get out of them. Um, <laughs> ends up hurting the, the poor, as most of these measures do. But no, the, the legislative fix would be to pass a balanced budget. And even that's not an immediate fix. We're way too far in debt for that. Uh, I mean, we're, we're pushing 30 trillion in debt uh, every year. For the last few years, the U.S. government has spent between six and seven trillion dollars and only brought in three, three and a half trillion in tax revenue. So it's this is we're far beyond the days of a a short term fix actually solving this. It will have to be long term balanced budgets. And what you see from continuing resolutions and uh, and debt limit hikes and, and what happens each time these arguments come up is that there is no plan to actually do that. The plan going forward is simply spend all of the money until it's gone and then print borrower tax more. What I love too about the Democrats is they keep coming with so many excuses for this price inflation. This summer, this past summer, Brian D said, oh, high inflation is only high because of the things we're counting that's causing high inflation. What the heck is that? Uh, Jen Psaki and Elizabeth Warren, they both said, oh, it's the greed of the meat lobby that's causing all those higher prices. It shows they have no idea what the heck they're talking about and their excuses don't jive whatsoever. Why, why are meat prices high? One of them, it a higher employment costs. One of the, okay, one of the chief unintended consequences of the whole Biden enhanced federal pandemic benefits was the fact that a lot of people enjoyed them. They made more money, gained those benefits. So they wanted to stay home. 
De de depleting their work ethic. So a lot of these meatpacking facilities, what they do is that they, in order to clear this backlog, they're trying to find workers to work all the time or trying to work, trying to find workers to work evenings and weekends. Then they're trying to pay more to do it. Uh, so what, what's happening? They can't do it because nobody wants to do jobs. So they keep having to raise these wages and then that money eventually seeps into the rest of the economy, causing you to have 20% higher beef prices. I love the logical tautology in that first example. Uh, inflation is only high because of the things that we count as inflation. That's like yeah. saying it is what it is, or the truth is a fact. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just a clever way of saying absolutely nothing. Well, because the that's better than admitting they, that you screwed up. They think they're clever when it comes to explaining <laughs> meat, meat inflation. Okay, yeah. Well, well the White House uh, is spreading this mess as if it's normal. Just the other day, uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki claimed that Build Back Better would not increase inflation. So I'm going to suggest that you sit down and have a glass of Christmas cheer with our Andrew Moran, and he can set her straight. Thanks so much, panel, and thanks for watching. And that's it for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble, or on the mall. As well, Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all of our TV productions. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember to surf on over to LibertyNation.com. Sign up for our new member zone. We're running a special this Christmas, just $6 for six months. Special thanks to our fantastic editor and post coordinator, Frank DiOrio, and our executive producer, Sarah Cowgill. I'm Lisa K. Donner, Editor-in-Chief. Thanks for joining us today. This has been a production of LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback.